Good morning. Have we got anybody? Aye. Oh, good. So it appears to be working this morning. We did seem to have a bit of a glitch when we started, but um, we tried a different device and it seems to be working now. Um, so um, welcome to this service of Holy Communion, um, slightly family-flavoured Holy Communion for um, Pentecost Sunday. Pentecost, where we celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit to the church. And we'll hear the story of that in a little bit. But it's also thought of as the birthday of the church, so a special celebration of the church of Christ throughout the world began when the Holy Spirit came. So it's kind of the birthday of the church. And in this service we pray that the Holy Spirit would come to us, be at work in our hearts, that God, that Jesus would be in us, working his love in our hearts. Um, only one notice, I mean there are other notices, do look at the bulletin sheets and link magazines and things when they come out, um, but one notice particularly for next Sunday, it's a little bit different being half term and the fifth Sunday of the month, um, the, there won't be a live stream service but there will be a pre-recorded service um, released um, next Sunday morning um, for you to watch for the service then and Tony Collins will be leading a Holy Communion at Holy Trinity at 10 o'clock, so the 10 o'clock, not, not 11 o'clock. So public service, 10 o'clock at Holy Trinity, and a pre-recorded service. So there's, there's on, online and physical options next week, uh, as we have been doing. Right, we're going to begin our service today by singing. Your song words, are, all, if you want to follow them, are all in the order of service, the family communion for Pentecost. This first song is uh, based on a little passage in the Old Testament where David brought the Ark of the Covenant of God into Jerusalem and into, uh, to, to celebrate. He was praising God and it kind of filled him up and he was leaping and dancing and clapping and singing and praising in the streets. And um, actually most people joined in, his wife thought he was bonkers, but, um, but he was really filled up with the Spirit of God and this song kind of remembers that. It's a bit of, when the Spirit of the Lord is within my heart, I will sing as David sang. And it's a kind of Hebrew style. It gets a little faster as we go on. Ooh, I will need the um, music, won't I? That would help. There we are. When the Spirit of the Lord is within my heart, I will sing as David sang. When the Spirit of the Lord is within Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. 
As we wait in silence, Lord, fill us with your spirit. As we listen to your word, fill us with your spirit. As we worship you in majesty, fill us with your spirit. As we long for your refreshing, fill us with your spirit. As we long for your renewing, fill us with your spirit. As we long for your equipping, fill us with your spirit. As we long for your empowering, fill us with your spirit. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2. This is the story of that first Pentecost. Pentecost was a Jewish festival which was celebrated every year anyway, but the coming of the Spirit happened at Pentecost, so we think of it, Christians think of it as the first Pentecost. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven staying in Jerusalem, and at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They're filled with new wine. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. I have here, you might have at home, a little bit of olive oil. I've dipped it in, I've poured it onto, a, onto um, some cotton wool. Now, oil in Christian ritual is often a sign of the Holy Spirit, a sign of the Spirit, and a sign of anointing. And people might mark themselves with oil to say as a sign of the Spirit coming on them. I'm going to invite us to do that this morning. The idea of being you just dip your thumb or your finger in it and perhaps make the sign of the cross on your head, or if you prefer, just on the back of your hand or, or something like that. Um, so we'll offer that as a chance to do in a moment. But first, um, some words from the service as we pray that God's Spirit would come to us. Be with us, Spirit of God. Nothing, Nothing can, can separate, separate us from, from your, your love. love. Breathe on us, breath of God. Fill, Fill us, us with, with your, your saving, saving power. power. Speak in us wisdom of God. Bring, Bring strength. strength. Healing and peace. Blessed are you, Sovereign God and Eternal Father. Daily your Spirit renews the face of the earth, bringing strength out of weakness, hope out of despair, and life out of death. By the power of your Spirit, may your blessing rest upon those anointed with oil in your name. Let it be for them a sign of your acceptance and adoption. Your equipping and empowering form in them the likeness of Christ, that they may be witnesses of your astonishing love and fill them afresh with life in all its fullness. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed, Blessed be, be God, God forever. forever. So I invite you to make the sign of the cross on yourself with oil, if you have some, or just to pray that the Spirit might come to you. And I'm going to sing just one verse of that song I began with as well. While you're doing that. Come to us, Holy Spirit.
keep praying for the Holy Spirit to come upon us. Holy Spirit, sent by the Father, ignite in us your holy fire. Strengthen your children with the gift of faith. Revive your church with the breath of love. And renew the face of the earth through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful people and kindle in them the fire of your love. Alleluia. alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. On the last day of the festival, the great day, while Jesus was standing there, he cried out, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me, and let the one who believes in me drink. As the scripture has said, out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. Now he said this about the Spirit, which believers in him were to receive. For as yet there was no Spirit, because Jesus was not yet glorified. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. The first day of Pentecost... Jesus was risen from the dead. Jesus' friends knew that. They'd seen him. They'd spoken with him. They'd touched him. They'd even sat down and eaten meals with him. But now Jesus had said goodbye and that he would be with them always. But how could he say goodbye and be always with them? He had told them already. He told them that his spirit would be in them and that they would take the good news of the kingdom of God to the whole world. And he told them to wait. So they did. They waited and prayed. They knew he was alive, but how did that change anything? They were puzzled and not sure what to do next. They waited and prayed for ten days. Until the day of the Jewish festival of Pentecost came. That's fifty days after the Passover. And people, Jews and other God-fearing people from all over the known world, gathered for the festival in Jerusalem. They, the disciples were praying in the upper room. They could hear the great commotion of people in the city outside. Then, as they prayed, suddenly it all started to make sense. Everything that Jesus had taught them, everything he'd done, even his horrible death, especially his rising again, it all made sense. God's kingdom had come. It had begun, but it had only just begun. And Jesus was still with them. His spirit was in them. And his spirit started to bubble up in them, to fill them up, to overflow, as he had said, like living water. Imagine this glass is one of the disciples. It was as if Jesus was inside them and filling up and bubbling up and overflowing and spilling out. His joy, his love, his peace, everything about Jesus was just kind of welling up from inside them. It was also as if they were like sailing ships and a mighty rushing wind had filled their sails and they were leaping out of the harbour. In fact, it was as if they could hear the sound of a mighty rushing wind. I'll try and do that. That sounds more like something blown up, but... Um, but an enormous sound of a wind, and it was like they were ships being blown along. Um, it was as if they were on fire inside, in a good way. The heat, the warmth, the energy was bursting out of them. In fact, they could see tongues of fire resting on each of them. They overflowed with praise to God and wanted to tell everyone what Jesus had done for them and for the whole world. All those people from all over the world, they weren't going to come into the upper room, so the Spirit sent them out. They spilled out into the street with excitement, praising God and telling everyone that God loved them. They could have peace and forgiveness and love and joy, and it was all won for them by Jesus. And bizarrely, everyone understood them. People from all over the world, with all their different languages, could hear them telling of the wonderful works of God, each in their own language. A crowd gathered. Half the people thought they were drunk or bonkers. But Peter, the same Peter who 50 days earlier had denied he even knew Jesus, afraid even of a servant girl, 
when she asked him, was he one of the, those his friends? Peter stood up in front of thousands of people and started telling them how Jesus was God's Messiah, come to save them. Their leaders had killed him, but they'd seen him risen. And Peter told them they could all be saved from themselves and from everything bad by God's love. And 3,000 people became followers of Jesus that day. 3,000 people from all over the world, the world that they knew. And those people eventually went home with a message about Jesus. And the church, a community of believers in Jesus, was born and started to spread over the whole world. So today we say, happy birthday, church. And I brought a birthday cake. Simeon, could you come and light our birthday cake for us while I carry on talking? got a birthday cake for us and we'll, we'll sing happy birthday in a little bit and blow the candles out and that kind of thing. But while he's lighting that, just a thought about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is God at work in us, in you, in me. The Spirit can be in each and every one of us. We, I don't suppose we will hear mighty rushing winds or see tongues of fire. I doubt people will hear us speaking in other languages, but we may feel filled up with God's love. We may find we have the ability and courage to do things for God that we didn't think we could. We may find ourselves loving more, feeling more joy and feeling at peace. We may find ourselves wanting to pray when we didn't before. We may find ourselves feeling sadder about the bad things in the world and wanting to do things about them. We may find ourselves wanting to share the faith that we found. I don't suppose these things will come all at once, but often, more often we find them growing in us over time. But sometimes they can suddenly just well up in us as if we'd overflowed. But more often it's like fruits growing on a tree. We don't feel those things. If we don't feel those things, we can ask God for them. Just like the disciples, we can pray for God's Spirit to come to us, to fill us up, to overflowing quickly or slowly. In fact, I'd say God wants us to pray that prayer, just as he wanted the disciples to pray it. And it's a prayer God will answer. If we pray to God, fill me with your Holy Spirit, it's a prayer he wants to answer. But maybe not straight away. Even the disciples had to wait and pray for 10 days. Sparky. <laughs> Sparky. <laughs> but when God's Spirit is at work in us, I think it's a bit like one of these little Christmas decorations. I'll show you this in a moment. Try that again. Yeah, like that last candle. Go on. Sorry, I'm a bit of wax on the cake. <laughs> oh, don't worry. You just pull it off, it doesn't matter. What is this? <laughs> and, and then, can you just give that a light? In, in the bottom of that, there's a candle. You've gone out. Probably a good idea if I do that. <laughs> Kate's rather <laughs> excited, isn't it? <laughs> what is going on? It's Pentecost. It is Pentecost. What is it? going on with this cake? <laughs> right, what I've done is I've lit a candle underneath this. Oh, watch this. Uh, now, watch what happens with that, hopefully. There we go. Can you zoom in on that? You have I have. You have. Ah. It's a Christmas decoration, this, actually. The, the reindeer are going round as if by magic, because there's a fire underneath them. It's as if the disciples had a fire inside them that filled them up, that gave them energy, that enabled even poor Peter to stand up in front of thousands of people and speak. The Spirit sets our hearts on fire with the love of Jesus, and it drives us, it moves us, it makes things happen. So we need to ask for the Spirit, to pray for it, because God wants us to have the Spirit, but he won't force it on us. So let's sing a quick happy birthday to the church, and then blow these candles out. <laughs> okay. Why? Why do you blow them out? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear church. Happy birthday to you. Can you blow these candles out, Sim? Why? Well, I'll blow them out then if you don't. Are you going to blow them or not? You're gonna, are you going to blow them or am I going to blow them? Okay. Oh, <laughs> Oh, 
<laughs> you can't blow the Holy Spirit out. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps exactly the point. Um, <laughs> once the Holy Spirit comes, you can't put out the faith. It's as if once the Holy Spirit comes, you can't put it out. Once you've started breathing, you can't stop. You don't want to, do you? The word for spirit, that won't work. Some special candles there. Uh, well, okay. <laughs> In the Bible, the Holy Spirit, the, the, word, the word for spirit means breath as well. It is the holy breath of God. God's breath in us. Now, if you try and breathe out as far as you can, hold your breath. Pretty soon, you will find. You want to breathe back in again. Once God's spirit is in you, you want to keep breathing. <laughs> People for years have tried to put out the spirit of God. The faith has gone up and down through the generations and through history. It keeps coming back. It keeps reigniting. Just like breath, it keeps starting again. You'll find you want more. Now, so this cake doesn't set itself on fire. Happily, I have some other water here. So there we go. I don't think it's going to reignite in there. But... There we go. There we go. So, the Spirit fills us up and makes us want to share the good news of Jesus. And to do that, we can't just stay in church, just as the people weren't going to come into the upper room in Jerusalem, the disciples had to go out. The Spirit sends us out into the world to share God's love with our friends, our families, our community, our world. And when we have more of the Spirit, just like you want to breathe, you will want to do that. Amen. Amen. I'm going to teach you another song. Actually, I did it at Pentecost last year as well. It's on, the words are in the order of service. Um, it's called The Enemy of Apathy, this song, after, named after one of the lines in the song. Now, the word apathy is kind of meaning, can't be bothered to do that. Ah, that's apathy. Um, the spirit is the enemy of apathy. It makes us... Get up and go for God. Um, but also, that word for the spirit, which also means breath or wind in the Bible, in the Bible it's a feminine word. So more properly, we probably ought to call the Holy Spirit she. And this song is a reflection on that. It's, it talks of the Holy Spirit as she, the spirit of God. She sits like a bird brooding on the waters. It's a story of the beginning of creation when the spirit of God hovered over creation and brought everything to life. So this has a, it's a, it's a little reflection on the Holy Spirit. She sits like a bird brooding on the waters hovering on the chaos of the world's first day She sighs and she sings Mother in creation birth to all the word will say. She wings over earth, resting where she wishes, lighting close at hand or soaring through the sky. She nests in the womb, welcoming each wonder, nourishing potential hidden to our Spectators, waking tongues of ecstasy where dumbness reign. She weeps and inspires all whose hearts are open, all whose hearts, nor can she be captured, silenced, or restrained. She is the spirit. 
spirit, one with God in essence, gifted by the Savior in eternal love. She is the key, opening the scriptures, enemy of apathy and heavenly Now we're just going to have a brief time of prayer, but for the prayers, I encourage you to light a candle of your own as a sign of that spirit in your heart, a prayer for that spirit to come to you and then to go out into the world, to heal the world of its sicknesses, to bring peace where there is war, to bring healing to people we know who are unwell, to bring God's spirit and love to all the world and to those we care about. We we'll just keep a moment of quiet and invite you to light a candle. Want to light another candle, Sim? Light a candle. Oh. You might want to light a candle at home if you have one, or not just. Imagine that light lighting. Oh, yes. That light is then a prayer for you. you look at those lights. Pray for the Spirit to touch this world, to touch those we care about, to touch us. Lord, hear our prayers for the world, for those we love and care about, and for ourselves. Come, Holy Spirit. And so the peace. God has made us one in Christ. He has set his seal upon us as a pledge of what is to come. He has given us the Spirit to dwell in our hearts. Hallelujah. The peace of the Lord be with you, alleluia, and also with you, alleluia. Blessed be God who feeds the hungry, who raises the poor, who fills our praise. Blessed be God forever. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ you shared our life, that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross, and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, 
take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. And being made one by the power of the Spirit, as our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body. Because we all share in one bread. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Body of Christ, keep you in eternal life. Body of Christ, to keep you in eternal life. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you and make his face to shine. Amen. Blood of Christ, to keep you in eternal life. Blood of Christ, keep you in eternal life. Faithful God, who fulfilled the promises of Easter by sending us your Holy Spirit and opening to every race and nation the way of life eternal, open our lips by your Spirit, that every tongue may tell of your glory, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. 
We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us. So we and all your children shall be free and the whole earth live to praise your name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our final song is um, The Spirit Lives to Set Us Free. Walk, walk in the light. Now, I lost the page, and I should be able to find it quite quickly. There it is. Spirit, who hovered over the waters when the world was created, breathe into you the life he gives. Amen. Amen. May the Spirit who overshadowed the Virgin when the eternal Son came among us make you joyful in the service of the Lord. Amen. Amen. May the Spirit who set the church on fire upon the day of Pentecost bring the word alive with the love, the world alive with the love of the risen Christ. Amen. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. So filled with the Spirit's power, go in the light and peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. God bless you all. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.